I think one of the first videos I did was for pulling pin bones out of a salmon and I had these like very Vanna White moves and it's very embarrassing looking back on it. I ended up in San Francisco kind of by chance, really. It was totally serendipitous. I was in culinary school and knew that I wanted to work in food media and Everybody was telling me I had to end up in New York City. Somebody, I think my sister, sent me an article from the New York Times and they talked about this startup for people who love to eat but don't know how to cook. And that was Chow. So at Chow, as food editor, I got to be food styling, recipe developing, and running the test kitchen. And that last part, the test kitchen, is it really speaks to me. It's that blend of art and science. The test kitchen cook in me you know, that's the scientist. That's the timing and the weighing and the measuring. And as a result of that, I try to give recipes to you that have been tested five to seven times. I've tested them on gas and electric. I've tested them in all sorts of weather so that your experience in the kitchen is as reliable and as successful as possible. My cooking style, it's been coined West Coast Eclectic because I combine fresh seasonal ingredients, the key to California cuisine, in a really contemporary way. I was raised in Southern California where there's all kinds of diversity of ethnicities and cuisines. So everything from Japanese to Mexican to Persian combines on the plate for really bold flavor, but always in a way that's respectful of the raw ingredients. So working at Chow and then being able to be on Food Network, the thing I kept coming across is this cooking black hole. There is a cooking black hole. And for whatever reason, a lot of us weren't taught to cook. I know how to write a recipe and I know how to write one that's gonna work for you. But I wanted to be able to create something that would also be a resource and maybe answer those questions that you were too embarrassed to ask or for whatever reason haven't asked. Those answers are in Keys to the Kitchen. If cooking were a math formula, it would be something like this. Quality ingredients plus kitchen skills plus technique plus cooking method equals good food. That's exactly how I organize Keys to the Kitchen. Part one is the setup. This section is about what to do at the store before you ever enter the kitchen. And the focus is on quality ingredients. You'll learn where to shop, how to shop, and what to shop for. Part two is the how-to. Just like it sounds, this section is all about honing your technique but it goes beyond basic knife skills to cover everything from prepping to cooking. In the recipe section, each chapter focuses on a different food, and each recipe focuses on a different technique. And sometimes I'll use really basic technique, but add a layer of really creative ingredients. Like, I have a really classic roast chicken, but it's coated in this balsamic soy glaze that's a little bit American, Italian, Chinese, and delicious. And other times, I use really everyday ingredients, but, you know, take them to the next level. So I've got a chocolate chip cookie that has the addition of coffee beans. That takes it all the way up here. Part four is the riff. This is where you go from following a recipe to cooking from the hip. And there are over 100 additional cooking ideas, including how to reinvent last night's leftovers. With over 300 recipes and 40 fundamental techniques, Keys to the Kitchen can't cook for you, but it can make you a better cook. Mm -hmm.